Hi everyone, and I'm super excited to be here with you today to share with you the three mistakes that are holding you back from the success in your business that you desire, and that are keeping you stressed and really stuck, and actually that's taking all of that joy out of this business that you began because you wanted to have the freedom, the flexibility, and you wanted to do something that you felt made a real difference in this world. And I think that that is so true of us all, and that it's so normal to get stuck at certain points in these three mistakes that I'm going to share with you today. So first, welcome. Um, I've got brilliant things that I want to share with you today and it's really going to make a difference. So number one is that knowledge is brilliant, but actually it's taking that knowledge and doing something with it that really creates a change. So uh, please grab pen and pencil, uh, pen and paper, pen and pencil, <laughs> so you can make a note of what we talk about today and really take this the next step by implementing it in your life, in your business. Okay, so I'm guessing that you're here, that you're listening to me today because you're a purpose-driven coach or consultant. You want to make a difference. You want what you do to help other people, but actually it's really important that you also help yourself because yes, you want to have more freedom. Yes, you want to earn uh, you know, a really nice amount of money that keeps you comfortable, that gives you the things that you want in life. Um, and actually, you really want that flexibility so that you can travel, you can do the things you love, you can look after your family, uh, you can work the hours that feel really good to you and that you know you're giving back and you're helping others with your gifts. And what I see again and again and again are people like you, like us, in fact, who fall into these three traps. And actually, when you know about these three traps, it's really easy to start and make changes on all of them. So today I want to share with you not just what those three mistakes are, right? Because that's not very helpful, but also actions that you can start taking now so that you can get out of making those mistakes and you're not falling into those traps again and again and again. How does that sound? Does that sound good? Um, okay, so if you know me, then welcome back. I'm super excited that you're here. If you don't, my name's Claire McPherson. I'm a mindset and business alignment coach, and I have been doing this for about 10 years now. My business started out when I was in, in New Zealand, uh, and I had my two children, and I decided that I wanted to work on my own terms. I wanted to be flexible. I wanted to take my children to school. I wanted to pick them up, and so I wanted a business that worked around my children, but I also knew that I wanted to make a difference, and I also knew that I had a gift in helping other people. And my journey since then has changed. My business has grown. It's made, it's totally transformed from what it first began as. Um, and about three or four years ago now, when we moved back to the UK, I took my business online and I absolutely made three, three mistakes that I'm going to share with you today. And I made them many times over before I realized I was making those mistakes. And it took me a long time to actually make some real shifts with them because and let me share this, and this is what I mentioned a moment ago, because I knew it on a knowledge basis. But what I was holding myself back from was actually living it and doing and being the person that I needed to be who didn't make these mistakes and who really dealt with them differently instead of kind of sticking my head in the sand, which was a mistake that I made and is a mistake that I see a lot of women making today. And it's not because we don't care. It's actually because we care so much that we can get ourselves caught up in circles. We can hold ourselves back. All of these kind of things, right? So are you ready to dive in? I hope so. So the number one mistake that women are making when it comes to building their purpose-based business, from allowing it to thrive, from allowing themselves to make the money that they really need and desire, okay, is you haven't got a healthy money mindset. Eek, I can hear you saying it like, oh, really? Yes, really, because our money mindset is huge. And it's actually so normal. So many people walk around with blocks around uh, their ability to make money, how they feel about money, their relationship with money, and their worthiness to actually receive that money by quite often doing what they love. Because let's be honest, we have this business, we do what we do because we love it, because we feel that it's our purpose, because we feel like it's what we're meant to be doing in life. And sometimes I know that we can fall into that trap of thinking, well, I would do this for free because I love it and I feel like it's my job to help other people. But 
yes, absolutely, I agree with you, it is, and you might well do it for free, but actually you deserve to be paid really well for what you do because you're transforming lives, okay? So the number one mistake is that you've got a money mindset that's a little bit icky, that's got a few monsters hiding underneath the bed, and we just need to sort them out and shift them. And maybe you've done money mindset work in the past, and maybe it's moved you forward a little bit, but perhaps you know that there's more work that you still need to do, because maybe there are still some things that you're hiding from, or maybe you haven't quite got down to that root cause, the thing that's really holding you back from making that money, or maybe it's just about owning it and deciding to change. So it all starts, money mindset starts with beliefs, right? So we need to stop and look at what are the current money beliefs you hold? What are the money beliefs that you took from your childhood, that you bought into from your parents? What are the money beliefs that you took from society? What are the money beliefs that you took from friends and family? What are some of those beliefs that you've got lying under the surface about money? So there's some of those really obvious ones, right? Like we've all heard the saying, money is the root of all evil, or it's, um, it's selfish to want to make more money, or people who make lots of money um, aren't somehow as good or as spiritual or as caring as the rest of us. So that's, that's one thing. We might have money beliefs around, you know, well, you, if you make the money, you'll lose it. So it might be that you don't trust yourself with that money. It might be that in the past you made some mistakes about money. Maybe you've got into debt. So maybe there's a part of you that's scared to make more money because you'll, you'll spend it all again or you'll, or you'll create more problems for yourself. Maybe you've got issues around charging more for the work that you do because you think that other people can't pay it or what if you're not good enough or what if you don't get the results that people want or perhaps you've had people tell you like, wow, that's so expensive, I would never pay that or like, really? You, you want to charge how much for the, for the work that you do? And all those things can have a really big impact and can be going on underneath the surface without us even realizing them sometimes. So the first thing that you can do to help yourself around this, and I would literally, I'd grab a piece of paper, um, and I would just split it down the middle. So simple as that, right? And on the first side, I would list out all of those limiting beliefs that you've got around money and your ability to earn money and your worthiness to actually receive money, right? Because that's a huge one. So all the reasons why you wouldn't, you couldn't, it's wrong to, all of those things. So it might be, well, it's, you know, I can't charge people that much, I just want to help people. Uh, it might be the people that I want to help can't afford the prices I want to charge. It might be, I'm scared of making that money once and then losing it. It might be, uh, who knows, I want you to really dig down deep into it um, and, and make a big, big list and come back this right because there are going to be more and more things that are under the surface and as you start looking at this more will pop up so it's almost like as you look you realize you can go a bit deeper and deeper and deeper and you might be thinking well I don't want to look right you might be feeling like I don't know what's under there but it's a little bit like the monster under the bed when we were a child where we wake up in the middle of the night we have that fear, we're like, oh my gosh, there's something under there, it's hiding, it's nasty, it's big, it's really scary, and we freeze, because it's like, oh my god, I don't want to look, because it feels like something really scary is under there. But if we are brave enough just to lean over the bed and take a quick peek, we very quickly realise that actually there's nothing there, it was all in our imagination. And the same thing can come into play when we look at our beliefs, because actually we quite often blow them up and make them bigger than they truly are. We create these stories that we live our whole lives by, but when we actually look at them properly, we realize that there's no truth in it. It's not real. It's all been made up in our own heads. And that is really powerful when we realize that and we make that realization. So as I said, on the first column on your piece of paper, all the limiting beliefs that you currently have about money that's holding you back from receiving the money you deserve in your business, from making the money that you want to be making, uh, that's maybe keeping your prices at a lower level from what you really, really want it to be. Or maybe it's around just keeping that money or investing that money or doing good things with that money. On the other side, once you've finished that first side, you're going you're gonna to switch, you're going to flip that belief. So if it was actually, you know, it's wrong to want to make more money, okay? If, you, if you've got a belief like that, 
maybe how what's the flip side of that for you maybe it's actually the more money that i make the more lives i can positively impact maybe it's the more money i make the more choices i can have maybe it's that actually everyone is deserving of having more money maybe it's just recognizing that you create transformations in what you're what you're doing what you offer people is absolutely priceless so there is no like maximum amount that you should actually have on that and um, i want you to dive into i want you to play with it so make a commitment put a time in your diary to go back to really look at this to start switching these beliefs and then it's about reinforcing these positive new beliefs on a daily basis so put them on your phone put them on sticky notes on the wall put them all over the place and talk them through on a voice app with yourself create a little group of friends maybe that you've got that you each say say them out to each other on a, on a regular basis think about what are all the ways that you can really help yourself implement these new more empowering money beliefs and as i say look at those old beliefs and recognize that some of these are just stories like you know they're not true when you actually look at them so choose to just actually let go of them because you're holding on to those beliefs for no real reason obviously this is something that we we could do much more of but for today i want to get through these three mistakes and i would love you to keep following my stuff uh, where i will go deeper into more of these things um, constantly i do it all the time so that's number one you need to start looking at your money beliefs um, number two is recognizing that are you creating your prices in your business from a place of scarcity rather than from a place of abundance are you really charging the prices that you want to be charging for the work that you do and more importantly the prices you need to be charging to be able to sustain your business long term and keep being that change maker being that light worker that you truly are because the mistake that I see people falling into is that they burn out in their business. What they do is they charge lower prices than what they really should be charging. So they need to take on more and more clients. They get busier and busier and busier and it gets harder and harder and harder to sustain this business. And as a result, they get burnt out. And as a result, they feel overwhelmed in their business and they lose that love that they initially had when you, when you really first think about when you had that initial idea and you were like, wow, this is the business I want to create. This is what I want to do with my life. And if you remember just that joy and that love and that excitement that you had at that idea when you were first getting started and think back to that moment and how that really felt and how different that can feel when you start getting stuck under lots and lots of work because you're not actually charging your worth and you're not charging what you need to be charging in your business to make this work long term because actually it's doing the opposite to why you started this business in the first place you started this business because you want to make a difference you started this business because you want to help people as well as helping yourself but actually what will happen if you keep on charging prices that are too low is that you won't be able to keep doing this and therefore you won't be able to help all of those people who actually need your help right so this is important not just for you because i know that sometimes we're not good at helping ourselves sometimes it's much easier to help other people so if you can't do it for yourself right now do it for all those clients all those people who need your help who won't get it unless you make your business more sustainable now so that you can look after your own needs so that your glass is full to the top so it's over overflowing um you're feeling in a fabulous place so that you could absolutely serve to your deepest level so it starts by serving yourself first and really charging the prices that you need to be charging and recognizing that your work is worth this and so much more and so when it comes to that pricing ask yourself what feels like the right price if i wasn't worrying about what other people might say if i wasn't worrying about judgment if i wasn't worrying about where other people would come up with this money and i was instead just listening inside to myself and asking myself what feels like the right price to put on this service or this product or whatever it is from you price it from that place that feels good that feels abundant and that feels expansive so it feels like wow yes this feels good this feels like it has the energy and the space that I need to be able to deliver fully in this program, to be able to give it my all because it's returning energetically so, so many more times. So that's just one little tip you can give yourself around this. 
Okay, so you need to go away and do something with those two points from the first mistake that people are falling into. Okay, make that commitment, make a promise to yourself around this. Mistake number two. Ready for this one? I did this so much and I can still get caught up in this. So we have to, we have to continue to watch out for this one, right? And this is that you think you need to know all of the how, right? I remember in my business about three years ago when I was in that place of feeling really stuck, I kept saying, I just need to know how. If someone just told me how, then I could go away and do it. And I was totally caught up in this story of needing to know the how. But the truth is, we are not creatures of knowing the how. We don't need to know the how for things to happen. We don't know how our cells reproduce themselves on a continuous basis. We don't know how our heart keeps beating that keeps us alive. We don't need to always know the how, right? What we do need to know is the what and the why. What is it that I'm creating here? And why is it so important? Once you know those two things, it's about showing up as fully as you possibly can. It's about who you are being, not what you are doing. So it's actually an identity shift. Does that make sense? So instead of you worrying about the how and knowing exactly how all these little tiny jigsaw pieces all fall into place so that you have this perfect picture of everything you need to do, because actually it's never that simple. Instead, it's you knowing who you are being on a daily basis as you grow your business, as you take action, as you attract clients, as you just be totally you and actually your very best version of you. So instead of trying to know all of the how, it's actually just knowing what's the next step that I need to be taking here. What's the next thing that feels amazing and expansive and exciting to be doing in my business? And, and I know before you say, when we do something for the first time, it might not feel exciting, right? So if this is something new that you know you need to be doing in your business, let's take Facebook Live as an example, because that's always a bit of a stumbling block for people. The very first time you do a Facebook Live, you might be saying to me, Claire, that doesn't feel exciting. I feel totally and utterly scared. I won't even say it, right? Of course you do. It's normal because it's new. And when we do something new, it often feel scary and that doesn't mean we shouldn't continue doing it because it's actually by doing it that we become more confident it's by doing it that our belief in ourselves grows it's by doing it that it shifts from feeling scary into something that actually does feel fun and really aligned and really good to be doing in our businesses so give yourself permission to do the thing that feels scary knowing that it's going to grow you knowing that it's going to grow your business and knowing that actually when you get into the flow with this it is going to start feeling so much better and so be the person who shows up fully in your business on a daily basis be the person who takes the action that has the biggest impact be the person who jumps knowing that you will grow your wings on the way down. Be the person who's not afraid to make mistakes because actually there's no such thing as failing. And actually, the only way people do fail is by not taking action because they're scared to fail, right? By not taking action, you're failing by default. So don't let that get in the way. Be the person who sees growing your business, bringing in new clients, making the money that you want as this fun adventure that you get to show up and take part in every single day that can be fun that can feel expansive that can feel beautiful it can feel calm it can feel any way you choose for it to feel if you just make that intention set that intention and just take the next step so one of the questions you might ask yourself on a daily basis is what are the things I would be doing today in my business if I felt totally confident abundant and excited about the business that I'm creating Maybe after you ask yourself that question, you'd say, well, I'd be doing a Facebook Live, I'd be boosting it, I'd be talking to so-and-so about speaking on stage, I'd be doing this, I'd be doing that. And you know what? Go and do it. Go and take action on it. That is the how. But actually, when we simply ask ourselves from that place of what would feel amazing, if I did feel confident, if I did feel excited, what would I be doing? That is the how. We don't need to overcomplicate it. We don't need to have every single place of that jigsaw in the perfect place to be able to create the results that we want. Actually, we just need to show up and be the person who's enjoying our business, who's growing our business, who's taking action and who's leaping. Simple as that. So just let go of the how, 
be the person. Own it, right? Just own it. Mistake number three. And this is linked to the last one, actually. And that's that I see people all the time falling into the when I have X, then I can Y. So when I'm earning 10K in my business, then I'll feel happy. Or then I'll feel like a real coach. Or then I'll feel successful. Or whatever it might be. When I'm doing regular Facebook Lives, then I'll feel really confident and comfortable talking to my audience. Uh, when, you could use this in another scenario, when, uh, when I feel confident about my body, then I'll start dressing the way that I want to. The truth is, anything that you want in the future, it's just a limiting story that's holding you back from having it now. And it's by having that thing now, doing that thing now that gets you the results that you want. So if you're telling yourself that when I'm earning 10K a month in my business, then I can relax and enjoy it and just feel a bit calmer and more confident about the whole thing, Here's the truth. You need to be learning how to allow yourself to feel calmer and more confident on a daily basis in your business. And that's how you're going to hit that 10K, right? Because it's like anything, and, and you, you'll recognize some of these for the, for the falseness that they have. Things like, uh, when I have a bigger house, then I'll be happy. When I have that car I want, you know, then I'll feel more fulfilled. When I've been shopping and bought those clothes, then I'll feel more confident and we all know because we've all especially the clothes on I know you've done the clothes on before it's like when I'll go shopping I'll buy these new clothes then I'll feel fabulous and you might then well feel fabulous for a few days but then it wears off right whereas if you were just choosing to feel fabulous on a daily basis you would still probably go and buy the clothes but you would get to feel fabulous every single day rather than it be this thing that you do or don't have so actually you were recognizing that all of these things are a mindset and you can have any of them right now. You can have all of them right now. And the way that we actually achieve our goals is by owning the things that we want internally right now, by switching our mindset, by having that inner shift, because that's what life's actually about, right? And I know that you know that. So take a look at how you're showing up in your business right now. Which one? of these mistakes are you falling into? Maybe it's all of them, maybe it's none of them, maybe it's just little bits of all of them. Maybe you recognize the mistakes that you used to fall into. Maybe you know that you can fall into them in times when you're feeling a bit insecure, but other times you're all good and you don't. So maybe you're that in-between step between like fully owning it, but you know, depending on how you're feeling on the day, you might fall out of slow with it. And I want you to make a commitment to, well, what's the action that you're going to take? Who are you going to be on a daily basis to start changing these results and to start actually pulling yourself out of these mistakes, rewiring your brain, changing these habits so that you can start making the money that you truly deserve in your business. So you can start attracting your ideal clients so that you can love your business every single day and it can feel abundant and joyful and expansive and fabulous so that you can have all the things that you want in your life because you've got this beautiful, fabulous business right now. Because the truth is you can. If I can do it, you can do it too. I've, I've helped so many women do exactly the same thing. The thing is you deserve this. I know that you've been working hard on your business and it is about recognizing first and foremost that you deserve to have a fabulous business that feels amazing. I hope this training has been useful for you today. Uh, please, it's really about you taking something from this and turning it into action because it's that action that in the physical world makes a difference. So show up, take that action now, think about who you're being and as that person that you're being, what action you're taking. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care, go change this and I'll see you soon. Bye.